A girl was left alone with six hungry pit bulls. You won't believe what happened. Every day, Carmen travels approximately 30 kilometers from her home. She leaves at 6.30 a.m. to take Ricardo, her oldest son, to school and run all the necessary errands. Family life, family members' activities, everything revolves around the schedule of Karen, her youngest daughter, who is four years old. The girl wakes up mid-morning to midday, almost never before 9 a.m. She is a heavy sleeper, going to bed at almost 10.30 p.m. after her bottle and bedtime story. Carmen has tried all the tricks that the grandmothers have told her in the television programs where they have exposed situations like hers with the child. The pediatrician wanted to prescribe her medicines that would calm her hyperactivity and help Karen to have a pleasant and restful sleep. In addition to helping Carmen with her work as a mother and publicist, which Carmen strongly opposed to because she considered it a risk for such a young girl. She has read many pages on the internet and has applied the suggested methods, but nothing works. Carmen ends up exhausted with the chores of the house, taking care of the children's needs and her job as a publicist, that since Karen's birth, Carmen develops it from home. In addition to the rivalry problems that she generates with Ricardo, who gets upset because he is sent to sleep at 8 o'clock at night, even when he's the eldest. That cool spring morning, she took Ricardo to school, paid some utility bills, picked up some jackets at the dry cleaners, and went to the supermarket to buy the groceries she needed for her husband Roberto's welcome dinner, who would be arriving from a sales trip that took him away from home for a few weeks. She stopped briefly at the stationery store to buy the craft paper with which she was going to develop a packaging design she had been commissioned to make. She was on her way to the car after leaving the stationery store, but when she wanted to start the van, something unlikely happened. She didn't have her keys, she didn't have her wallet, and the van had been left unlocked. How would she get back home in time? She realized that in going back and forth between the stores she had visited in the morning, she didn't know where she had left her wallet. Her mind was spinning, and she could not pinpoint where she left it, since she parked the van in the shopping center that was on her way back home. There, she could get everything she needed. She just had to park and walk down the aisles to buy what she needed and return home without going out of her way. Her anxiety was greater when she took her cell phone out of her pocket and saw that it was 9.45 a.m. She had little time left to find the lost keys and return home before Karen woke up asking for food. She activated the house's closed-circuit surveillance service and blanked when she saw the girl's room empty. In desperation, she tapped the cell phone screen to move from room to room in the house. She searched the bathroom, the hallway, the kitchen, the living room, and Karen was nowhere to be found. She put all the cameras in the house in mosaic mode to perceive any movement other than the six pit bulls, dogs trained for lethal attacks. The dogs jealously guard the house every time they leave. Nothing appeared on the screen, only the dogs forming a circle in the garden of the house near the parking lot. They didn't move, they only looked towards the center of the circle well formed by them. That behavior's not normal, thought Carmen. Seconds later, Carmen's legs lost stability when she saw that the circle formed by the dogs broke and out of the middle came Karen walking towards the ramp, followed by the six ferocious pit bulls. Her body did not react. Her heart stopped beating for a few seconds and then burst into palpitations that could have caused a heart attack. Her mind could not come up with a plan of action. The only thing she could do was to observe the last moments of her little daughter's life. She sat in the parking lot aisle with her cell phone in her trembling hands, on the verge of tears as she looked at the enlarged image of the house's parking lot. None of the dogs were wagging their tails, all of them with their ears straight up in alertness, and in front of them, Karen in her bunny pajamas, wagging her pom-pom tail in front of the killer dogs. She turned on the loudspeakers and heard Karen's little voice. In a forest from China, the little girl got lost, she sang, turning her back to the wild beasts. Her innocence protected her. 
She continued to sing as she opened the doors to the trash in the yard. She turned the lock, but the door didn't open. She pushed it, and it didn't open either. She put her hands on her hips, as if thinking. She approached the door again and kicked it open. She walked calmly into the utility room, and Carmen breathed calmly, believing that the little girl would close the door and wait for her to arrive. This was not the case. A few eternal minutes passed, and she saw Karen again on the screen, dragging the huge sack of food for the dogs with difficulty. The anxious dogs began to bark and approach the little one with the desire to jump on her, but... Hey, respect, respect! No one is getting close. I'm the one who's going to give you the food. She pointed to each animal, and they didn't move anymore. Sit down, be quiet, be quiet! She shouted with her little face wrinkled and her little hands around her waist. To the mother's surprise, all the dogs sat in front of her and watched her closely. They didn't miss a move as she turned the sack over. Because of the slowness with which she was distributing the food on the floor, the biggest dog, Zeus, stood up to eat, and Karen, with an annoyed face, pointed at him, and the dog returned to his place. When Karen was satisfied with the shape she gave to the food, she moved it with her hand if any of the pieces got out of the circle she made. Then she shouted, Go! lowering her hands as if it were a street race. The dogs desperately went to the pile of food and ate to their heart's content. Karen walked back to the house. She climbed through the bars of her bedroom window and into the kitchen. Carmen was still shocked by everything that had happened, but calmer knowing that her little girl was safe inside the house. She got up from the floor, and on the other side of the van, the girl from the stationery store was walking towards her to return her purse. Oh, Mrs. Carmen, I'm so glad I found you, said the saleswoman with a tired, anxious voice. I've been walking around the mall for a while, and I went to surveillance to pinpoint your location through the cameras to give you your purse. You left it under the counter. Thank God, and thank you for returning it, said Carmen, grateful to get her belongings back. It was another customer who shopped at the store who noticed it was under the checkout counter, she said, reaching out her arm to hand her the purse. We wouldn't have noticed it until tomorrow when we swept the store before opening the doors. With everyone seated at a beautifully arranged table, Roberto blessed the meal and Carmen thanked God that the morning's event did not escalate. Roberto asked her about what happened. Carmen took her cell phone, activated the video that she showed to her husband and son, and there was an expectant silence. The father, astonished by what happened to his little girl, took her in his arms. Oh, my sweet girl, he said as he held her in his arms. You must be careful with the dogs, because they are very fierce. How brave you are, Karen, said Ricardo, who knew nothing of what had happened, kissed his sister, and hugged her. Daddy, they are my friends, said Karen. I have always wanted to play with them, but you won't let me. Carmen and Ricardo promised to never leave Karen alone again, and that she would share more with her new furry friends. If you liked this story, like and share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel!